This is part four, where I discover I might have a warped cylinder head. The main areas to cover in this part are, remove the camshafts, remove the cam follower assembly, and remove the cylinder head. So here's how the cylinder head looks at the moment since I last worked on it. And we need to remove the two cams, the follower assembly, and the cylinder head. The engine should already be at top dead center on the compression stroke from part three, but make sure it is before doing this section. We removed these two bolts as it's part of the top guide on the timing chain, but as a safety precaution and because the bolts appear in the sequence for removing the bearing caps, I'm going to pop the bolts back in and just torque them a little bit, not as much as normal, but just torque them a bit so that I can still remove them as part of the normal sequence of events. We now slacken all the valve adjuster lock nuts and undo the screws, but don't remove them. This removes the pressure on the camshafts from the valve springs. Use a 10mm spanner and a flat bladed driver. So I tried to undo these with a short spanner, 10mm, and that was actually quite a struggle. So I'm using a longer 10mm spanner here, which seems to give me a little bit more leverage. And then it's just a case of undo the the screws with a flat bladed screwdriver. Let's just turn them so that unlocks them and then unscrew each one in turn. So we need to do that so it takes all the pressure off that intake camshaft. There's a close up view of it. You can see the valve rising there. You can clearly see the intake cam primary and secondary follower there. And now the exhaust side. So for the exhaust you have to do the same again. It's a bit harder to reach over so you may want to watch your back on this. But you have got two valves per cylinder so there is two lots of screws to undo though there's only one cam follower so unlike the intake which has like a primary and secondary follower the exhaust only has a single one piece follower I guess it's worth noting that when we put the engine back together again we will have to adjust all of these using a feeler gauge so there will be 16 valves to adjust and get right. Next is the camshaft bearing cap bolts. I will add a photo of the sequence that these must be undone in. Also note that they should only be undone by two turns at a time to gradually relieve the pressure. The main bolts need a 12mm deep socket and the three smaller bolts which is bolts 1, 2 and 3 are 10mm. Here is the camshaft bearing cap bolt slackening sequence. You may wish to pause it at this point. So here I start with the 10mm socket and it's two revolutions. So one and two. And then on to bolt number two, which again is 10mm. Two revolutions on that one and then bolt three, two again on that one. So, you now have 20 bolts left. There's four in each of the bearing caps. And these are 12 millimeters. So again, in the principle is two revolutions only of each one. That corner one was a bit tricky. because I didn't want to take the handle off. Because I, I wanted to make sure it was still only two revolutions. Thankfully it bent down. So I was able to do that. So you may want to watch that. Make sure you've got the clearance to do two revolutions. So basically work your way through them. So that one's number six. I'll speed these up as I actually undo them. 
then number seven. I was making sure it was at like six o'clock position. So as I undid them. I could have sort of deleted this part. Um, but for factuality, I thought, well, I'll leave it in and just speed up the bits where I actually undo the bolts. So at least the sequence is still visible in the video. So I'm checking there with the Haynes manual to make sure I get that sequence right. There is quite a few bolts there. So number 16 now, getting through there, 17, Nineteen, nearly there. Twenty, twenty-one. Two more to go. Twenty-two and twenty-three, which is the last one. I then repeated this procedure for all of them again. I certainly won't include that part um, until all the threads were completely loose. So now it's on to removing the bearing caps. This was bolt 2 that I had removed that. Now for the 5 bearing caps. I've added a photo to highlight these caps. I think it's best to keep all the bolts together so they return back to their original holes on the rebuild. Here's a photo showing the 5 bearing caps. They are actually numbered on the actual aluminium themselves. Now, I probably should have mentioned in the previous section that removing the bolts is quite a critical exercise and that if you slacken them inappropriately and crack one of these bearing caps then the cam follower assembly will be no good and the cylinder head will be no good. So it does need to be carefully done. So I'm starting here on bearing cap number four because it's easiest to access. And I just gently tap it with a very small hammer just to gradually shock it so that it comes off. So I'm taking plenty of time on this. So there's no need to rush it. And I'm using a very small little wedge there as well. I'm not sure on that one because obviously you don't want to do any damage to the aluminium at all. So I think probably just tapping it's the safest option and then the bearing caps off. Note the metal dowels, top and bottom. If they're loose, make sure you keep them with the bearing cap. I'm now gonna put the bolts back in exactly where they came from, in the same order. So they go back in to the same holes that they came out of. So now I'm just gonna put that somewhere safe. Bearing cap three. So I'm sort of working my way left. So this is the centre one, which is bearing cap three. Now this one has five bolts in it. There was a small 10 millimeter headed bolt in the middle. And again, plenty of little tiny taps just to loosen it. And off it comes again. And again, there's a dowel there at the top and the bottom. And again, make sure you put the bolts back into the same holes that they came from. Bearing cap two. I think I'll probably speed most of this up. I think you get the general idea. And that's number two off. Bearing cap five. And I'm doing bearing five now. Got to be a bit extra careful here because you have got the camshaft position rotors at the end there. So you don't want to 
accidentally whop one of those. So that one is a little bit trickier. And there we are. I'll speed this bit up as well. And lastly, bearing cap one. And bearing cap one, which was very kind, because it just came straight out. So it didn't require any tapping. There we are. Again, you can see the two metal dowels at the top and bottom. So, corresponding bolts back in and put somewhere safe. Then very carefully remove the two camshafts. So we can now lift out the camshafts, being extra careful again because of those position sensor rotors on the right hand side of the camshafts. So I'll start with the intake, they're being very careful. Just lift that out. So I'm going to look at it there. And put that somewhere very safe. And then the exhaust camshaft. Again, being very careful not to ding it on its way out. The cam follower assembly is next to be removed. This can be done as a whole assembly if you're very careful. Very importantly, the, the intake primary and secondary followers must be held together with cable ties or strong rubber bands. Then we pop bolts 6, 7 and 10, 11 back in loosely. Here is a photograph showing the cam assembly supports, which there are five of, and the cam followers, which are in red. This whole unit can be removed in one piece. So here's some photos to show why the primary and secondary cam followers should be cable tied. It's to avoid this spring and piston shooting out. But if one does pop out, at least you can see how to put it back in. So I opted to use cable ties. And it is quite a nerve wracking job the cable tie is quite rigid and you're trying to hook it underneath both of those cam followers without one of them popping up and spitting the spring out. So that's cylinder one done. So as you can see that's tied together now. So that's quite safe. So I'll speed up Cylinders two and three, because my head got in the way a few times there. Could do with the camera being lowered a bit, I think. So you can clearly see what I'm doing here on cylinder number four. Just popping them both up, very carefully putting that underneath and tying it down, making sure that neither of them move up as you tighten it up. There we are, that should be okay. And the exhaust cam followers at the back, they're all one piece. As you can see I confirm that they are one piece. And I'm also going to confirm that every cylinder has the same one just in case one was different. <laughs> now the careful job of lifting the whole cam follower assembly up and off the cylinder head. Be careful not to damage the delicate aluminium or break off the delicate plastic pipe on the air bypass control thermal valve like I did. So if we take the bolts that correspond to the two centre bolts, which is bolts six and seven at this end of the engine, 
and just drop them in loosely and then do the same for the other side. So these will be bolts 10 and 11, so that's actually 11 going in and then bolt 10. So having those four bolts in will hold the pivot bars and the assembly supports together so that when we remove it, it doesn't all fall apart. Now we've got the case of very carefully levering the whole assembly off the cylinder head. So it's basically a case of using some sort of lever um, and being very careful and just gradually levering it all a little bit at a time without breaking this piece here. If you watch here in slow motion, I'm just about to snap that pipe off. There it goes. Fantastic. There we are. Going to need a new one of those or we'll need to mend that now. So I guess the lesson learnt there is to be aware of your surroundings. So gradually just keep levering. There's a little bar there that seems to be able to lever against. I went for a screwdriver this time on this part. Mind you, without the pipe there, it made it easier. So it's just lifting up a bit. And then on the other side. So I think there is some metal dowels in there. So that's why I started tapping gently with a small hammer. And it's now starting to come away. As you can see the whole assembly. So the two pivot bars have a notch at each end where those bolts will actually slide into. So that's why it holds it all together. And it stops those assembly mounts at each end from coming away. So it's a good idea to put those bolts in, like I have there. Certainly don't want that falling all over the garage. And just to show the camera, you can see the metal dowels all in the end on the top of the photo. All this work has been to undo these last 10 bolts with a 14mm socket and long breaker bar. It's time to remove the cylinder head at last. Though one error I overlooked was leaving the exhaust manifold stud still in place, which prevented the head from lifting off. So here's a little overview of the cylinder head now that we've removed the cam follower assembly. So we just need to undo those 10 cylinder head bolts, but in the correct sequence. So here's the sequence in which to undo the bolts, but remember to only undo them by one third of a turn at a time. So using a 14 millimeter socket and quite a hefty breaker bar, because there's slack in the joints of the tools, I take up all the slack so it's at six o'clock as if looking on a clock and then turn like four hours backwards to two o'clock and then that's one third of a turn. It is quite hard. So now we're at three o'clock and then a bit further to two o'clock. So I then do that for each of the ten bolts. There's quite a bit of slack in that. So there we are, slack's taken up. Five o'clock. Struggling there. Put my back into it. There we go, it's starting to move. I don't want to lift it off because that will lose the position I was in, if you imagine a clock face. So I need to sort of maintain what I'm doing. We are four o'clock. Three o'clock. And then basically two o'clock. So there we are. Speed up the rest. I think it might have been easier in hindsight to have used the shorter extension. I did use quite a long extension there from the socket to the actual breaker bar. 
Um, and maybe perhaps a little bit longer on the breaker bar. I mean, it's easy to forget the longer the extension, the more twisting that bar will allow instead of transmitting all the torque straight to the actual bolt you're trying to undo. So I then repeated that same procedure a second time. So I'll speed all that up. But yeah, so that was the second time I did one third of a turn. And then I did it for a third time of just one third of a turn again. By which point they're basically all loose and ready to be just undone by hand. Now that they're all loose, I'm able to use the socket with that extension bar and basically spin them in the palm of my hands so I can just undo them all quite quickly. And then we can just lift them all out and number each of the bolts as it's important that they all go back into the same holes that they came out of. So what I've done here is to use some PVC tape which I've put the numbers 1 to 10 on so I know which bolt came out of which hole. You may need to wipe the bolts, that one was really oily. So I mean some people use cardboard and you just have holes in the cardboard with the numbers that the bolts came out of so either system's suitable. Um, but I didn't have any cardboard to hand so I've gone for PVC tape. I'll speed this up now. So although some people would say it's good practice to replace these bolts with new ones, according to the manual you can reuse the bolts but you do need to check the diameter of the bolts to ensure that they haven't stretched beyond specification. So before replacing them you will need to use a vernier or something and go through a process of measuring the diameter of the bolts to see if they have stretched too much. And lastly, the last bolt, which is number one. So now we should better just lift the head off. So before lifting the head, ensure you haven't missed anything that might prevent the head from lifting cleanly off, like an exhaust manifold stud. So I did have one problem with the exhaust stud on the top left hand side. You can actually just see it poking through there. Now it did say in the manual to remove the exhaust manifold but then it says you need to replace uh, the joints and the bolts and everything else. So rather than do that I was hoping that I might be able to just lift the cylinder head past that bolt. Um, but there isn't enough movement in the manifold to do that. So, but lucky enough I was able to actually get some grips onto that stud, um, get a purchase on it and undo it. So thankfully I was able to remove that stud and here it is there. So on with removing the cylinder head. So here comes the moment of truth. It is quite heavy so it's worth bracing yourself with some padding over the front of the car. And there's the gasket. It's like a three layer sandwich type of gasket. A bit different to the older ones that I remember. So it does look like there's signs of rust in the pistons, presumably from the coolant leaking. So yeah it's like I said it's like a sandwich that gasket. Now I'm no expert so I'm not quite sure what I'm looking for here. Perhaps somebody would know exactly by looking at all this. All I know is I've got to clean it all up 
um, replace the gasket and hopefully the engine's going to work again. One thing that I did seem to notice was that the concave part of the piston crown on cylinder number three was cleaner than the other three cylinders. It was like the other ones had carbon on but that one didn't. Now whether that meant the that cylinder was running hot or something I don't know. Here are some detailed photographs with labels to help with identifying all the visible parts. I will put them on for only 4 seconds with the idea that you can pause them for detailed viewing. Thank you for watching and please see part 5 in this series.